Hello and welcome. Today, we're going to try and use a $50 Dell Enspron 11 that I got off of eBay. The price was definitely really good, but can we still use this four-year-old budget ultrabook today? Normally, I'd be plugging a sponsor or promoting my channel at this point in the video, but given what's happening around the world, it really doesn't feel right. Black lives matter, and together, we can bring an end to the injustice in our society. Be kind to people of color. In fact, be kind to people of any color. We have the power to change this. Don't stay silent. Anyway, let's open up the box and see if this laptop survives shipping. I always find it exciting opening up packages. You never know how securely they're going to be packed. I mean, if it's packed terribly, at least it'll make for good YouTube content. Inside this box, we've got a genuine Dell charger, plenty of bubble wrap, and of course, the little laptop itself. This budget ultrabook is still in very good cosmetic condition. Having black keys on a white laptop is visually quite appealing. Something a bit less appealing are the sprinkles and ice cream spilt in the screw hole. Yes, those are definitely sprinkles. I really don't understand how laptop displays can get this dirty. It's not a touchscreen either. Overall, the hinges seem fine and I should be able to clean it up fairly easily. Now for the moment of truth. Will it turn on? I'm very glad to say the answer to that is yes. There was a user account already made, which was fairly easy to figure out the password for. I will reset Windows 10 before I go ahead and install programs though. Since we know that it works, let's open up this laptop and see what it has inside. The sprinkles needed to be dislodged before I could get in further. Surprisingly, there was a considerable amount of rust forming on the screw beneath. I removed the eight other Phillips head screws, one of which was hidden under a little bit of plastic. The two halves of the casing are also held together by clips on every side. I've never taken one of these apart, which definitely didn't help, but with a little bit of gentle persistence to keep the clips intact, I was able to separate both halves. An unusual design choice was having the USB 2.0 port and 3.5mm audio jack on a separate board attached to the bottom casing. The long ribbon cable was easily unclipped, and now we have our first look at the internals within. The keyboard connector was definitely seated very unevenly, although I couldn't seem to line it up straight because it was wedged under the battery. So let's unplug the 32 watt hour battery pack and remove it from the laptop. It's without a doubt one of the thinnest laptop battery packs I've seen. At least we can see why the keyboard connector was seated on a weird angle. It's literally folded over on itself in a quite tatty looking way. Disappointingly, both the RAM and the tiny 32GB SSD appear to be soldered to the motherboard. To get access to the CPU, I removed the copper cooling plate. This large piece of copper is designed to keep the CPU cool enough not to need a fan. The thermal paste was definitely starting to become less of a paste and more of a flaky mess, which tends to happen after a few years of use. To clear away the old thermal paste, I used some isopropyl alcohol on a cotton tip. After a few goes at cleaning the copper plate off, it was completely free of thermal compound. I don't think I've ever actually seen a CPU mounted diagonally before. I, I wonder if there's a reason why they did this. The new thermal paste I applied is Arctic MX4 which is a good all-round compound. The copper cooling plate could now be screwed back on. To make sure that the screen hinges don't become loose, I went ahead and applied some thread locker. This will keep the screws securely in place. While the laptop was pretty clean inside, I made sure to wipe out any debris that had accumulated on the bottom casing. And now we could start putting it all back together. There was no real point in taking it apart any further, as there was nothing more I could clean inside. There is definitely quite a bit of free space left inside this laptop, mostly next to the motherboard. Even though nothing aside from the Wi-Fi card and battery are user replaceable, it was fairly easy to disassemble. That's something you can't say about a lot of laptops these days. With it all back together, let's give the casing a clean with a healthy dose of eucalyptus oil. The label on the back didn't seem to like the eucalyptus oil and it smudged quite a bit, but I made sure to carefully wipe so that the label wouldn't get destroyed. Keyboards can be very unhygienic. If you ever buy a second-hand laptop, I would strongly suggest you clean it with an antibacterial solution. I must say, the keyboard looks a whole lot nicer now. When it comes to the filthy display, I wipe the surface with a damp paper towel, 
following that up with a microfiber cloth and some lens cleaner, the same stuff you use on sunglasses. With the lid also wiped off, it was once again a very, very clean laptop. A laptop that, in a lot of ways, looks very similar to a polycarbonate MacBook. From the tapered edges to the glossy white finish, it's pretty clear what Dell were modeling their Inspiron 11s after. Considering they've both got 4GB of RAM and a dual-core processor, how do they compare when it comes to performance? In Cinebench R20, the MacBook crushes the Dell with a score of 245 versus a score of 100. The faster clock speed of 2.26 GHz in the MacBook combined with better thermals likely helped. I also ran the benchmark on my Dell G715, which may have performed a little bit better. Running a graphically demanding benchmark yielded some unexpected results. The Dell far outperformed the MacBook, which has an NVIDIA 9400M graphics processor. I guess the integrated Intel graphics in the Dell Inspiron aren't as bad as I thought. Although for interest's sake, here's how the RTX 2070 Max-Q in my Dell G7 scored. Playing some old school RuneScape was a good experience on this laptop. Even in the big window mode, you could get by playing this. A game it really struggled with was Minecraft. I tried playing on my server, but it was basically unplayable, even with the render distance set to only 3. I did however find greater success while using the Optifine Performance Enhancing mod. If your computer is really struggling to play Minecraft, you should definitely download this. If you like destroying cars at 5 frames per second, BeamNG Drive is the game for you. This is running at the lowest possible settings, and I still couldn't get it to be anywhere near playable. Terraria is a far less demanding game, thankfully one that does work okay on this laptop. The frame rate isn't amazing, but you could play it on here if your life depended on it. Hello. Relievingly, full HD YouTube playback was nice and smooth. It's a shame that the screen kinda sucks when it comes to brightness and color reproduction though. While this laptop does have solid state storage, it is very, very slow. We're talking like mechanical hard disk levels of slowness. I've literally gotten better write speeds from a 5400 RPM drive. While it's not very powerful, it is definitely incredibly portable, and the battery life has been excellent. In the few days I've been using it, I've regularly gotten over 5 hours on a single charge. The keyboard was also fine, I could totally get comfortable typing on this. Even back when this was released, it was not considered powerful. But the thing it was considered was affordable. I believe these retailed for under $300 from the research I've done. If you need a device that can do web browsing, document writing, and has excellent battery life, I'd definitely recommend picking one of these up cheap. Just be sure it has at least 4GB of RAM, as there were some models that shipped with only 2GB, which simply isn't enough. Thank you very much for watching. For those of you that are Eucalyptus Oil members, there will be a behind the scenes video out in a few days. Thank you to everyone that watches my videos and supports me in whatever way they can. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video.